say no when they demand you to be magical. Say no, say no, black woman, when they articulate young lady as a boy. Say no, say no, black woman, when they rape your daughter in detention and call her a whore. Say no, say no, black woman, when they call your sister a mad ass. Say no, say no, black woman, when they call your brother a base. Say no, say no, when they call you a lazy man. Say no, say no, black woman, when they call them, give you a backseat and your liberation wagon. Say no, yes, black woman, a big no. We are in affirmation or refusal that says the body of the force that will not be stopped. You're ahead of the front of me. You need these questions for the debate. Which is that black woman relationship to labor is one that forced the production not only of work, but of black church will also weaponize the destroying network, objectifying and sexualize that work intensively, thinking that work killing worker is a question and not a resolving the world living in spite of it. The one is he establishes itself as an authority to the debate which requiring the domestic crime policy that reorients our relationship to labor for one that's operationalized against black women reduce their identity too of that of labor instead to working for itself and saying no because we're never being able to be able to can make the for black women not an opposition now the affirmative results through our constant process of refusal that identifies our flesh having capacity to say no to the requirements of whiteness the mantra of carefree after unification first is referring relationality the mantra of carefree assumes intersectional orientation that says our love of blacks to be unconditional is a love that a soft support says no ask that person brought to the jail cell we affirm we all hands not perfect we'll both by our starts and our flesh we understand blacks is the bad part of this we dissolve unique form of psychic bonds by setting the categories that are determined by top four and top semesterly that exists in the status quo that launched a revolution of black women and core people in terms of their production as well as citation inclusion is a revolutionary practice the mantra of carefree obviously chairs not just redefine masculinity but also redefine blackness setting the tone for who we are who we can be and why we no longer abide by the old standards of what we should live by the next impact is uh, self care of black bodies in the community itself give the appearance strip this really just grit and illusion of how the form so black that current terms of the body example that Nicole gives the one they see is going to be uh, the relevant dark scene movie where it was started by Karen Washington to push back uh, against the unfair expectations of black women that said that they could not be beautiful because of your such beauty standards but what when that was met by us our pressures from toxic masculinity within the community as well as white society saying that you see was not beautiful she commits suicide this is gives a window into the forms of internalization that happens the psychological bonds that leads to the very real impact of suicide now caring for itself is a necessary prerequisite to dialogue all black productions made to be commodified to the structure of the academy and in the big that never solves the problem that black folks face in the regular knowing who you are is important to keep uh, necessary for you to be able to inform you capable of contributing we started out from the democrats for the body which refused the semiotic norms of the semiotic norms of the debate space to set ourselves up as that kind of for the last effect is going to be silenced our argument that they through being able to discuss the forms of racialized and sexualized violence that black women face within these particular debate spaces i.e like nicole talks about the violent rumors violent rumors and other uh, uh, other lies and crazy uh, are, 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 are crazy descriptions of her uh, flushing the particular in the debate space rules unique forms of psychological violence that can occur within this space our argument is through uh, speaking out a lot allows for us to be able to change uh, our language and the actions and be able to tell us these forms of violence that occurs in terms of the debate space this independent impact even if we lose care free our speaking out in this space particularly at vintage for the one I see now you can group their first two arguments your argument is terrible this is the status quo for black women they conceded that the roles are already predetermined by the civil society that's why the cold says that she has forced to use her black women in the status quo which means that the uh, affirmative is necessary to the alternative to our affirmative is the psychological bonds for not meeting the particular expectations of uh, external validation which means you should prefer our self was starting for us so our, our starting point for the self our argument while we were able to resolve that for collective bargaining is to engage with the self understanding how we can contribute to that system of bargaining tools that we can create a better communal aspect additionally this is not just individualism we are two people two flesh which means that we can adapt and create a type of change against toxic masculinity that affirms the relationality between black men and black women within these particular spaces now their norms argument is fucking terrible in any case that you are not able to change norms because the cross is bad across is bad for them in any case that the norm of transphobia controls the way in which the civil society works that uniquely creates a form of psychological violence and if our impact or our uniqueness claim is right then that's just supposed to norm is to literally strip the flesh strip the work away from black women's labor from their flesh which means that they link back to the impacts of the status quo now you should prefer the have no other offense on the floor means that you should full a hermit affirmative at this point now go to fuck out <coughs> First on top of county, you know, scale justice means that you should uh, have to give up some of your ground because of forms of structural inequality. That means that we can not be on the level. You go to Georgetown, which means that you already are part of a debate machine that presents a particular image and you're part of a perfect background. As I know you from, from Stuyvesant, it means that you have a particular, uh, you have a spiritual background and the uh, black bodies on the other side of the so you have to give up some of your ground in order for us to be able to engage within academic spaces. Secondly, that they, in terms of the example of paternalism, uh, perhaps laws, because it identifies how people should be able to engage in particular debate spaces, which uh, it embraces the ability for people to bring in their own conditionality or understanding of uh, climate change black greenhouse gas emissions from their particular locality it means that they displace the ability for experiences to create a better form of policy making that get interpreted the way in which we are bodies are implicated within the structure now our arguments that they require for us to be able to create a talent the must in their interpretation proves the requirement of any uh, uh, inexplicability of being able to respond or uh, negotiate the term on which reduction that's always happens on the context for black women just leads back to the impact of racialized advocacy because it says that the nicole or uh, nicole the speaker the one that always has to produce a fucking strategy for this space we need to lead back to the psychological 
discussion we had on the top case. Secondly, is that uh, they say that there can no way to be able to test when you're engaged with the F arguments that global system, that the, the global system is contingent on what can they happen necessarily when we engage with Wake Forest, UMKC, Kansas, uh, 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 Cal Berkeley, all at the top of the bracket like we are. They are able to have the fundamental good educational conversations, but they're uh, going to relegate us to a non educational productive uh, strategy. It shows how they are able to externalize black scholarship from these particular spaces. Additionally, for us, for them to say that we don't have good decision making skills to say we are not advocates, literally, paternalism excludes the fucking work that we do for this fucking space. The way in which we go back to our community to teach them how to engage in public dialogue shows how they can literally devalue our ability to spread our scholarship within these particular spaces. This means that they are literally externalizing black lives from this space. Additionally, there, uh, there are no framework debates underneath their interpretation. Framework debates are good because it allows us to be able to challenge the way in which the law, uh, a particular law, our uh, rules are set up in order for uh, uh, us to create a type of practice that can challenge. The uh, state parameters that control our bodies in the first place. Additionally, uh, there's no top version of debate. They will point to a plan text that tries to solve the app, but our arguments that be uh, one and C, two and C, the block and the two and all will never be a discussion about the forms of self care that are necessary to push back uh, against the forms of violent, rest of, uh, violent and uh, sexualized violence that black women face in these spaces. Their interpretation is not uh, swept back for the app. Additionally, their uh, testing arguments, particularly in the black because uh, uh, argumentative testing for black women carries a violent uh, history. Their testing begins the level of flesh and works outward. The uh, uh, hot venus, Henrietta Lacks, the BLM violent black women body. Work as a side of argumentative theory testing. This is an independent reason to vote affirmative of uh, the course, but we refuse to be a part of the experiment because it comes, uh, it never becomes that experiment, which will lead back to the testing of flesh. Additionally, our argument is that uh, uh, the, uh, the question of what our, our model looks like and not being able to understand it is exactly the inextricable part of the one that sees available to put the black woman ahead of the conversation, not only the conversation, but also to control the means by which they engage in their affirmation of themselves, which means that you should reject your interpretational things. Additionally, their uh, access is going to be a critical trolling like, to your advantage. There's no accessibility to the rule making panels for the decision making dialogue of the debate space currently because black women literally have no access not only to memory I, I, I proven by the NDT ceremony that literally gets to her, get the deaths of black women but also into the context of their success which proves how in space and their model debate literally externalizes black women. Okay. First, their mental evidence falls out because literally in the context or it supports how black women's labor is literally at the point of connection for capitalism. The affirmative is going to be orientation away from labor being for the structure of capital, but uh, being for the self, which means that we are orientation away from that hypervaluation that creates the market. Secondly, is that the affirmative is an example of a speaking commodity, which speaks out against the forms of evaluation that can happen because of the semiotic market. If we create an intrinsic value that occurs internal to the self, which cannot be fit into the market of capital, which proves that we are able to rupture the ability for labor to be articulated through the capitalist market. Additionally, our, uh, our Argument will also answer back to uh, but also it's not about uh, hypervaluation. You can cross by the toxic masculinity advantage. It's something where it indicates we are a collective action that uh, step that, that, that breaks the separation between black women and black men. And these assholes solve solves the hypervaluation. It also means that we are a pushback against the capitalist destruction that can control the roles in particular black women. It's additionally, uh, their interpretation is not understanding the way which bodies are implicating the structures. It, uh, the argument is not that structural analysis is bad, but that structural analysis is fucking com incomplete because it does not implicate the way in which bodies act and perform in order to create structures. They don't just pop out of no where capitalism does not just come out of Georgetown's ass, but rather it is predicated off of the way in which we can uh, engage with those structures. Also, powers don't, or structures don't work around us, they rather work through us. Their inability to understand how uh, they're implicated within the structure of capital, i.e., the way in which they produce a particular aspect with their criticism proves uh, the impact of doubling, which says that you can separate the personal and the professional, which justifies worse atrocities like uh, uh, justifies worse atrocities like a Nazi soldier, but Nazi soldier engaging in violent acts because they don't see themselves implicated within that structure of Disney perm, you teach law of, 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 of uh, 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 do the uh, uh, firm being carefree as a method against structure of capital. Our argument is that when we are able to look down from the penthouse class, that means that we are burning the structure of capital behind us by understanding and orientation past that. Just uh, they say start from the body. They say we should be a playful and safe. That's going to be the example of a strong black woman that says that they have to create a particular strategy for all people which impact church and is impacted by your mental evidence. Indicates that that here is unique for the boss. They say we must create a strategy for all bodies. That really leads back to the system of capital. Turn to criticism. And your link debate is an example of how they are capitalists in this space. We are going to narrow our discussion to things that primarily concern framework. And there are two things to consider after the 2AC. What are the ways the 1AC is being applied? And are there new offensive responses to framework independent of the 1AC? So let's evaluate each of those questions. The 1EC is being used to support a strategy of disruption or resistance to the process in which black women are subjugated to being productive in the resolution of problems, but then are in turn faced with racialized and sexualized form of violence unique to their position. So when Devon says they prescribe how we should engage or they, the negative demands a strategy from us in the form of a topical plan, 
the negative is being accused of being mirroring the process the way he sees critiquing. Similarly, at the bottom, when he says it's unfathomable to put black women in charge of the conversation, that is a similar articulation of the same idea. Two related but potentially distinct threads are this notion that argument testing is violent in the context of black women. He gives some examples, like Henrietta Lacks, about how black women are sites of experimentation. This is a similar idea substantiated in a new way that could matter a good bit later on in the debate. The other one is about accessibility, and there I think the phrasing could have been improved. There may be something to this notion, but what is said is a little disjointed. As far as memory goes, or a more specific indict of a particular debate norm that Georgetown is propagating, and its history of black women. It's just not exactly clear what the thrust of this argument is. So what about external things? There is a structural inequality is more important than fairness argument at the top. There's also a goalpost moving argument coupled with defense that other debates prove framework is not necessary for good engagement. And then there's this framework debates are good argument, which doesn't have much of a link because Georgetown isn't really saying you can't disagree with their interp, and the impact is probably resolved through other kinds of debate. They're not really exclusive to framework debates. So we can see that the crux of the strategy is about speaking to the, particular, the particularity of black women and making some large claims about their experiences and the nature of their oppression, and then providing support for those ideas in a variety of ways. Certainly, structural inequality and goalpost moving can play a role in the later speeches for the app as well. But it's interesting to note how focused the debating is on the core of the 1AC without too many extrine extraneous elements. So what cross-sex strategies is Ezra going to pursue? Most likely, they will zero in on the mechanism of self-care and how it can resolve the structural oppression being outlined. Given the context of the 1 and C, a road likely not to be taken is challenging this notion that black women are constantly positioned to be productive. Whether that is accurate and why that happens is likely to fade into the background, but it is a core part of Rucker's strategy. So let's see what happens. <coughs> Okay, uh, so you made a few arguments um, on team. You said that local understanding can produce better policy, that it's good to export the scholarship produced in debate, and bring it back to communities, and that it's possible uh, you know, in a dialogic space to have good discussion. Uh, are those desirable things for debate? To good conversations? To towards? Like good conversations and discussions for strategies and stuff? Yeah. Sure. I mean, what, what about, what about, about to determine good, how that conversation goes down? What about good policy? I mean, I'm going to fuck. Our argument is that you should just not determine how that conversation goes down. Like, okay. you should not be able to tell me that you are a bad method because you don't affirm a policy. Well, so that if it discloses or excludes policy making or our scholarship from the debate. That's kind of why black kids don't want to go to Georgetown in the first place. Like, you can't so tell me in round A of the NDT that we should not be able to speak our ass. We're in the same fucking bracket, have the same more balance than you. But our argument is that why can we be excluded from this space? If it is possible to integrate local understandings of the environment of climate change into policy and a discussion of that policy would make us better agents. Why is that something our interpretation excludes? Our why would that not be a good The argument is not that you exclude it, but rather that you require people to engage in a conversation in a particular you manner. Control the conversation. You control You control how policymaking should work organically in this space. Our argument is that that displaces, and when you force it to have, uh, affirm the topic in a particular way, you displace the ability for us to bring our experiences into the resolution. Why does, why does our interpretation prevent? Because it says that we must experience. pertain by the topic. We can't ever bring into ourselves our identity or how our identity or how our understanding of the but world is informed by our identity and our localities. But we can't bring that, that in. You made the argument that it is possible to use your identity to formulate. Yeah, but our argument. Is, no, 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 no. You're misunderstanding our argument. Our argument is not that we need to identity to create politics. Our argument is that we need our identity to understand our relationship to the topic to debate about that. So like understanding our positionality, our locality, where we're from, Nicole talks about the EPA list that grows exponentially every fucking year in the city, right? It's not that we're ignorant, but rather that we don't think okay. we need to create a fucking policy for you. We should be able to talk about our positionality, not in the context okay. of how debates should work. Then let me let me ask you a different question. Sure. Then when we think about what the the negative is trying I don't, to do. I don't care what the negative does. Well, and we, the fact that you we, think we can we control do care about. the we I, happen to right, unless you're here, enjoy. Our argument is that we should not be able to tell you how you Ezra, should debate. You I'm, not, I'm not care. asking. Ezra, you just said care was bad. I, I am not. Right. Ezra, so why do you care so much? I am not asking. That's like not liberal. I am That's not, not liberalism. You just caused your own impacts. Where is the war at? Where is the family? I, I am not asking. Is there a for, I am not asking for 
either of you to tell us what the negative should do or what arguments well, we you should did. read, I mean, but merely what the what the role even is for the other person in the dialogue. You literally just, just say you don't want us to give you a role. Do you what is the role? What, what, what is decision? what is the point of the other person? Your being decision in the dialogue? We can't tell you what to do. That's the point. That's real. I can't tell you how to be. What I is can't tell you how to negate. Me telling you how to negate is antithetical to the world because it says that I can control you like white control me. I'm not gonna do that to you. Me some phenomenon, man. So there are two chunks to this cross-examination. The first is Ezra asking about why can't you use the insights from the 1AC to advocate for topical action. Devon's response is that the problem is the imposition of framework, not necessarily the goals of improving policies. Debate needs space for people to center their experiences and understandings of the self to promote dialogue and how they're going to be in the world. Recall the impacts of the AF, relationality, self-care, and silencing. Can you craft a 1AC that defends restricting emissions and speaking to these things? Maybe. Devon said in the 2AC that there would be a trade-off, and Ezra doesn't press that aggressively on why including plans prevents resolving those impacts or creates substance cut out when Devon kind of restates the premise here in CrossX. The second chunk concerns Ezra asking about the role of the negative. At a glance, this question is not great because why is it the ass job to tell the neg what to do? And Rutgers responds like that. But what Ezra is likely previewing is this idea that Rutgers vision for debate does not seem to require two sides. If the role of debate is self-understanding, sharing experiences, discovery, self-care, etc. What does having a team assigned to disagree with you add to that proposition? So Ezra here focused more on previewing what the block is going to say about framework rather than challenging the premise of the app. So now our attention turns to the block where Georgetown has to justify their interpretation and resolve whether it's a problematic imposition on black women and explain how their interp interacts with these notions of self-care, relationality, and silencing. We will see what happens in the next video.